My name is Dr. Susan Mathai, and I'm a physician that specializes in interstitial lung diseases and sarcoidosis, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. Your lungs are sort of made up of a few different parts. There's your airways that like bring the air to the lungs. There are the little air sacs where the gas exchange, where oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange from your blood to the air. But then there's all the tissue around it that holds all of that together. Interstitial lung disease is non-cancer, non-infection, things that affect the spongy part of the lungs. Sarcoidosis refers to a specific kind of inflammation that can affect the spongy part of the lung, um, so can cause a kind of interstitial lung disease. Unlike other interstitial lung diseases, it can affect any part of your body. The way that we define it is it's um, granulomatous inflammation, which is a really specific kind of inflammation in the tissues of your body. And most of the time it affects the lungs, but it can affect any organ. Almost always it involves a biopsy to prove that granulomatous inflammation in an organ. The symptoms, unfortunately, are really varied, and this is the challenge of the disease. In order to get to that diagnosis as a doctor, you have to have your mind open to it as a possibility. I was losing, I lost a lot of weight, but I thought it was because I was walking a lot. My car, I didn't have the car, so I thought because I was doing a lot of walking to the restaurant, to the stores and all this, that's why I was losing weight. Then I found out that I had sarcoidosis. Yeah, so one of the tricky things about sarcoidosis is that sarcoidosis often presents as like respiratory problems or breathing problems, but it can present as other strange things that just seem weird to the patient. So weight loss or having, you know, fevers, feeling unwell, joint pains that you can't explain, unusual skin rashes. It can present in a lot of different ways. And it's actually one, one of the reasons it can be challenging for doctors to, to recognize it at first in some patients. And so her story sounds very recognizable. Maybe sounds like it took a while for her to even figure out what was going on with her with her doctors. One of the benefits of seeing a doctor who has special interest in sarcoidosis is understanding and recognition that we can't just focus on the lungs, we have to be vigilant about skin, eye, heart, and other organ involvement. It can affect the liver, the kidneys, all of that. So when a sarcoidosis patient can find a doctor who is really interested in sarcoidosis, I think that really can really help their care. My understanding of it is, is um, um, some kind of disease that's um, consistent to black people, but I haven't tested for it, but it's something that's, um, you know, just for black people. She sort of said that sarcoidosis is a disease that affects black people. And that is true, you know, that many sarcoidosis patients are black or are people of color, but it actually affects people of any color. And I think that is something important for both you know, doctors and patients to know that it's not specific at all to any one um, ethnic or racial group and can affect anyone. So just because you're white or um, you look different than a person that you know has sarcoidosis, that does not mean that you cannot also have sarcoidosis. So I do wanna mention that there is a higher prevalence of sarcoidosis in African-Americans compared to certain other similar uh, lung diseases that I care for, like IPF and other pulmonary fibrosis diagnoses. So I think that there is a totally uh, reasonable and, and kind of heightened sense of awareness um, in the black community about sarcoidosis compared to other uh, other chronic lung diseases. In many ways, it's similar to asthma. Asthma also can affect patients of um, color and from so certain socioeconomic backgrounds, but also different ethnic groups differently and can, and can be harder to control in certain groups. And so a lot of research has gone into and needs to continue to go into like why, wh why those disparities exist and how to best address them. I have no idea where it came from. I don't know if it went away, but I haven't had any problems with it in years since. The patient also mentioned that sarcoidosis, can, that can, it kind of comes and goes. For some patients, that is true. Sarcoidosis, for some people, is something that's almost found accidentally. Uh, many of my patients come to me because 
They're like, well, so somebody said my chest x-ray is abnormal or my lymph nodes are swollen. And in some of those patients, the sarcoidosis just kind of is there and doesn't really do much, either for many years or for the majority of the patient's life. There are other patients who have sarcoidosis that kind of like she's saying comes and goes. So there are times where it flares up and is really active and the patient does have to work with their doctors to treat it, to get it under control, and then it can kind of go into remission. Sometimes that happens without medication, and at other times we use medications to achieve that remission. And then there are some patients who have sarcoidosis that is more like a chronic problem, meaning it requires ongoing treatment, and so sometimes people are on treatment long-term. Do your doctors, when you go see them, ever ask you about sarcoidosis? Not in the last couple of years, because you had a special, I had a specialist for that, and he has since retired, and um, I hadn't seen him for like last maybe four or five years. So I had to contend with that, not even knowing really what that was, but was put on the medication for sarcoidosis and monitored with that for a couple of years. Every patient's a little different, and that's part of the reason having a really great relationship with your doctor is important in long-term sarcoidosis management, because even if you start in one category where things are not active at all, that may be the case for many years, but there may, may be a time in the future where things flare up and you wanna have a good relationship with a doctor that you trust so that you can kind of help work with them to get things under control. I do want people to not feel bad about if they have to change a doctor, like that's okay. And honestly, we don't take it, we, <laughs> we don't take it personally. And if we do take it personally, that's an us problem and, and not, not a patient problem. We just want the person to be, the patient to be with the person that's gonna, they feel is gonna be their best advocate. My goal in, with, is that I'm trying to make the experience of having seen me and me being part of a person's journey be the positive, be a thing that made a really hard thing, usually a chronic disease that I can't wave a wand or even give you a medicine and necessarily take it away, um, but still being able to like have been made that person's journey a little bit better because it was me instead of the person that had been sitting next to me in um, med school. My name is Dr. Susan Mathai and I'm now included.